What's happening, guys? Keith here with another Impact Wrestling Review. So today we're going to take a look at the January 18th edition, and I am once again joined by Ro. What's going on, man? Not much, man. How you doing? It sounds like you sound better. <laughs> yeah, definitely feeling better. Uh, cold kind of stuck around for a little longer than I had hoped, but, you know, back to uh, back to feeling good. So, uh, yeah, so let's talk about some Impact. Actually, you know what? Before we get into the show... Um, if you guys haven't checked out already, I have uploaded my 500 subscriber giveaway video. I'll leave a link in the description below. You guys can enter to win two 8x10 autographed Impact Stars. So, yeah, what'd you think of last night's episode, man? Dude, I think it was great. You know, two back-to-back -back episodes of Impact. Well, back-to-back -back weeks, I should say. Um, I did a fantastic job. I think they got some great momentum riding towards the Mexico tapings. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Um, they, again, you know, viewership isn't where we'd hope it would be. Last night it probably peaked around 8,500 views, a little 3,000 down from last week. But again, they put on a really good show, and it's it's never really been about the quality of the show. I mean, while we may disagree with some of the booking, they've always generally put on a, a quality product, even with the dips in the ratings. You know, and I think the toughest thing, and I remember talking about this in the past with viewership, because, you know, I know there's a group of people who don't care about it. I mean, I don't think it's everything, but it does matter, because especially when you're talking about whether you're negotiating for, you know, another contract with a TV, TV uh, partnership or, you know, trying to shop the product. I mean, they're going to look at what you draw, and that does matter, you know, whether they see you worth the investment. But I just think now with wrestling, and all wrestling, there's so many alternative ways to watch where, you know, if you tell someone, hey, this is going to come on at 7 p.m. and someone's busy, you know, they can DVR it and watch it at their own convenience or, you know, streams or whatever. So that obviously affects viewership because if it's if uh, people aren't watching when it initially airs and they watch at their own convenience that's you know one less body to watch when it airs so to speak so i i think if they were able well, and i mean i'm not saying they would but i think if there was a way where like you can just get total viewership whether they watch when it airs or whenever they watch i think the numbers would really please a lot of people yeah absolutely and i mean today this is all about convenience. I mean, um, this has been one of the concerning things with a lot of people is people have posed the question of, you know, is it available on VOD? And no one would get an answer. And I just think, you know, that should be at least something that Impact comes out and talks about because I think ignoring people, 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 they, I guess they get bothered by that because it seems like they just get turned off by the product. And I know you were, you talked a lot about them being available on VOD and not being available till 10 days later on the GWN. I want to ask our listeners what they think. If they're able to catch the show live on Friday night or they're going onto YouTube and watching it or the Pursuit Network. So any of you listeners, let us know how you're viewing the show and if how important VOD is to you. Because... Later on today, when my girlfriend gets off of work, we're going to watch all the shows from the week that we didn't catch. I don't watch any TV during the week outside of wrestling, but, you know, Saturday night I pop on Hulu or the DVR and I watch all my shows. So I think it's it's really a big thing right now. No, I mean, <clears throat> excuse me. I mean, I know you got people that are a lot of people are cord cutters, but I'm the same way, man. I mean, I got cable that the premium package I mean, for she doesn't carry pursuit but outside of sports that's really all i really watch you know a lot of the shows that i used to like i mean we talk about like king of the hill they've pulled that off i don't even think it comes on adult swim so you know yeah ev everything's about convenience i mean and i think now you know for those who have dvr or you know if you can watch it stuff on hula or whatever you, know, you watch it at your own convenience there's not that need where you know maybe for kids Hey, you know, I got to hurry up and get home. I want to catch this at 8 o'clock. It's like, oh, it comes on at 8, record. Oh, okay, I'll watch it this Saturday. So that's just right. the <laughs> times we live in. Yeah, but and especially for kids, it's on 10 to midnight on a Friday night, you know? I mean, sure, people are staying up later, but a lot of people work Saturdays now, and people work late. It's it, It's tough. It's a tough situation. 
Yeah, definitely. But all right, so let's talk about the show. We open up KM versus I guess the returning Caleb Conley. It's probably probably been quite some time since we saw him. Maybe do we see him in Mexico or is it even before then? I I don't remember. I can guess that the last time we seen him it was something or part of the Coda Lee. Yeah. Jeez, it's been quite some time. But uh <laughs> Yeah, no, this match took place. They were getting underway. Uh, Josh did mention about KM and Falaba's Christmas book, which obviously Don joked about this. But I I really thought they missed uh, an opportunity to capitalize on this. And I know you felt the same way. You know, and then, you know, some of the commentary, and it kind of just had me, and, you know, maybe it's just me looking too much into it, but the way that he was talking about KM and Fala. He made them seem like they were jokes, and I kind of just felt like it was, and like I said, maybe it was just me looking too much into stuff. But I was like, man, these guys were riding high. They have a book, you know. They look, you know, people they're over too, and I think people wanted them to, you know, capture the tag team titles. And I just kind of feel like we're probably never gonna see it. I think they're just kind of seen as a team that's comedy relief, and you know, the one thing with Impact. And I'm sure we'll get into it. I think what they have to do, they got to strike when the eye is hot, take chances. They have nothing to lose. I mean, there's the times that they've brought in people, the you know, who, who they deem the bigger names. Nobody's come in and really swung swung the needle where it's like, oh, okay. Like everything's really kind of stayed the same. So knowing that and knowing that you at least have your core audience that's going to watch take more chances and i thought with cam and follow they were a team that they you know could have but i don't know if we'll ever see it yeah no absolutely i i think it could be a missed opportunity and i mean i think those guys would be the guys you get to bring in on like the house shows the twitch specials things like that where you know the fans recognize them they'll be willing to watch and come see but uh yeah we'll see um so we cut Backstage, we see Brian Cage. He's looking for Johnny Impact. He ends up making his way out to the ring, and he ends up beating up Caleb Conley, KM, and then Falaba. Uh, eventually beats up the referee, uh, which was Johnny Bravo, and he was actually the referee during the title match, so I liked where they went with that. Um, Brian calls out Johnny. Fans are, are re- reacting very well to him. Uh, He says he thought he was getting the title shot, but I guess Johnny is facing Cross next week, so he's going to sit back and watch to see where that goes, I guess. Johnny comes out, Killer Cross and Moose come out, attack Johnny from behind. Cage then drags Johnny into the ring, goes for an F5, but Moose ends up taking Brian Cage out with a spear, and then Cross takes out Johnny again. So no, this was a a good opening segment, but um, I I think they could have used maybe different guys for Cage to beat up. You know, I felt, you know, until I seen it play out, because I said, let me wait and see how this plays out. Because if you're going by just crowd reaction, I guess Johnny Cage is the face and people have seen the turn. I mean, not Johnny Ryan. Cage. <laughs> Brian Cage. I did the same thing on the Homecoming <laughs> review. <laughs> uh, Brian Cage is yeah, the face and Johnny Impact. A lot of people, have, or it seems that some of the fans have turned on him. And then obviously there's Killer Cross and the Moose aspect. Yeah, I didn't really like Brian Cage running in and and um, destroying KM and and Conley. I think when you have something like that, is it show it lets folks know that th- those talents don't re- necessarily matter. Yeah. And um, but what I just found what was funny at first was just how it all played out. They booed Johnny Impact. Johnny Impact's getting beat up. Brian Cage is just sitting there watching, and it's kind of like, whoa, isn't that what a heel would do? And then they, yeah. then he goes in to capitalize on it, and then, and then when you know, once we got Moose attack, attacking Brian Cage, I thought it was was uh, neat. So it, it's nice because you could t- you could argue that this is probably the main event scene at the time being these four individuals. Um, my only thing, and I'll just say with with Johnny Impact. I feel for the most part, because I've been a fan of his reign, I think for the most part he's been, you know, know, a cool champ, you know, a cool baby face. I think just the outcome of Homecoming didn't really do him any favors. And I know there's people that say, well, they should turn him heel. 
the thing with Impact, what they can't afford, well, not that they can't afford to do, but what they don't want to keep running into is every time they build this super face, because, you know, let's face it, up until he won the title, Johnny Impact was the de facto number one face. Mm-hmm. Anytime it doesn't seem like to be getting over, they can't always rely on turning somebody heel. And it's just kind of like the thing I'm thinking is, okay, so if Brian Cage were to win the title from Johnny Impact you, and for some reason the fans turn on him you're gonna turn him hill too like you can't keep yeah. turning everybody hill we need some kind of uh a number one face and that's the thing that i i think they kind of have to get away from turning everybody hill yeah it it is the easy thing to do i i think this segment actually might have worked better last week because cage came out all pissed you know after getting screwed out of the title i think that would have worked well as well but i mean their opening segment last week was good too and then uh, lastly, like they kind of just I felt I mean, I didn't see anything promoted, but I felt like they just kind of threw that killer cross versus Johnny Impact title match in Mexico. Like, you know, normally heavy, heavily advertised. You would think they would heavily advertise something like that. I felt like they just threw that in. And did they advertise it beforehand? Um, I think they just talked a little about it last week. I don't think anything was actually set in stone. OK. It was like when Cage came out, he was like, well, I guess you're facing cross first. I thought I was getting the first shot. And it was just like, oh, OK. <laughs> mm-hmm. Weird. So then we go backstage. Brian Cage is back there, obviously pissed. He challenges Moose and we have a match between the two of them. So that was that was coming up later on. Then we have Eli Drake comes out and he joins commentary to watch Eddie Edwards versus Ethan Page. Um, I don't know about you, but. Eddie Edwards has some of the most brutal chops in the business. Every time he he battles somebody, their chest is always beat red or sometimes even bleeding. Yeah, uh, um, you know, I, I look at Eddie Edwards now. I mean, he's just a whole transformed character. <laughs> I mean, it makes you wonder, like, if there were a hardcore title. And I know hardcore wrestling, we, we kind of get it kind of uh, – um, it's more of a spectacle now. It's not something that we kind of get routinely. I don't know. On the pay-per-views we do, though, you know? It seems like a lot more matches are either no DQ or have some sort of hardcore elements in, you know, in the match. Yeah, you're, you're right. I guess I, well, I take back what I was saying. <laughs> but I guess the point of the matter, I don't think we get him enough where, if, like, just say they were going to have, like, a hardcore title. Like, he would probably be the uh, perfect candidate for it. But yeah, no, I know. I think him, I think his chops, I think Moose's, and I think uh, Pentagon's, man. Those things look painful. Yeah, 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 that's good. Um, Eli on commentary, he, he's he, he's a joy to watch. That's all there is to it. He, I feel like he's just one of Impact's more polished talent, which I think is why fans get, not upset, but, you know, annoyed that he isn't always in that main event picture. Um but yeah, no, the, the match was good. Uh, I I really think Ethan Page is a very underrated talent. He seems like he's very versatile and can work styles regardless of his X Division style or a heavyweight style like he had here. But um, Eddie Edwards ended up getting himself disqualified after he grabbed Kenny. And uh, yeah, there was that. I, I I'm on board with the finish, you know. I feel like had Eddie gone over clean, it would have... I don't know. I feel like Ethan could be a guy they can elevate up into that upper mid card area. But again, we've said this time and time again. You add that mid card title in, and Ethan Page is a perfect guy for that spot. Yeah, I I, I believe that he's somebody, and I'm not going to say towards the end of the year, but I think in the mid, like he can really move up. And I know there's always there's a camp of no, we don't need any more titles. But I think the one thing that we're missing is there's not that bridge. Like you can't always thrust somebody. Like I, I just use for example, for some for say somebody like a, a Seidel. What I thought helped Seidel when he won the grand title, I think that kind of um, bridged him, you know, into that uh, upper tier mid card. And I know he, he, I think he won the X division. After that, no, he held uh, both titles. Yeah, no, no, I know, but I think he won the grand first, then he won the X. Oh, 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 yeah, yeah, I think so. 
yeah. So the point that I'm trying to make is there needs to be that. So for some wrestlers, I know there's some of them, they can just, you know, work their way, work their way and automatically get a, get in the world title picture. But I think for some having that mid card title, that kind of, um, it's like that stepping stone we and we've seen in all wrestling you know a lot of the biggest stars they kind of win whatever the the mid-card title is whether it's the intercontinental the u.s or whatever it is it's like they win that and then that kind of catapults them into the main event whereas with impact not having that because you know with the x division and, and you know i'm sure we'll get into it i mean the the one thing i think the x division really needs some sort of i excuse me some sort of identity because like like in in i hate to you know keep bringing up old old points but it, there's so so much inconsistency because it's like one week we see one guy who's facing you know and he's not a traditional exhibition guy next week we see the high flying stuff like it's just all over the place and i don't think the exhibition title unless you're a smaller guy i don't think that's that title catapults somebody into the main event like an actual mid card title would, right? I mean, no, it, no. you know, the exceptions are like obviously Brian Cage and Samoa Joe, but I mean, you think about the other guys that who've won the X Division title, and I mean, they've just stayed in the X Division. <laughs> mm-hmm. Well, like you had brought up, I don't think it was on the pod last week, but we had talked about a, a Twitch title or something like that. I mean, that's their base now. I mean, they run the Twitch specials, you run your TV show on there. That's something I could definitely see them looking into. Yeah, but I just would wonder with that, like, will it be treated as a legitimate title? I think the the point of it is, if you're going to have something like that, obviously it needs to be defended on actual impact, but as well as the other, you know, one night onlys, and and I don't know why. I don't, well, you know what they might might have. I'm sorry, I don't really. Uh, I've never really seen any of them. Do they defend impact titles on some of the one night onlys? Yeah, yeah, oh, I okay, think so. Well, that, that's good, but. Yeah. Um, Have we I, ever I, had a title change, though? That's a different story. <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I always believe you have to do things like that to uh, spark interest. You, because I think a lot of times, even like with house shows at times, you know, people believe some of the matches advertise, oh, nothing's going to change. But I think even if, and it could even be a situation, and I know they don't do back-to-back ones, but I know sometimes in the past with wrestling, like they might do a title change on a house show, but then the next night the title changes back. I mean, just it's, it's it it just kind of sparks interest in, in it. But um, yeah, I, I really hope, and I think the next survey I'm going to put on there, you know, add another title i mean you could defend it on explosion but you have a lot of guys that are kind of just just kind of just floundering there's yeah. really not, nothing for them to to strive for even if they're if you don't have it, um, any intentions of making them champion but have them compete towards something yeah yeah like i like willie mack i feel like would be another person that would fit in with a mid-card title because i think he's re- he's advertised for a ring of honor show recently and as far as i know not many impact talent works ring of honor so i don't know if there's anything going on there but you know oh wow that's crazy (laughs) yeah yeah so i don't know if i'm looking too far into it or what the deal is because i I think he's a tremendous talent i think again someone like ethan page i think they could really do something with these guys but again i don't want them just floundering around yeah and i think that's just just the biggest thing because we see see a lot of that it, and I just think with something, whether even I mean hell, even though you know he's in the main event now, but even Cross, could you imagine Cross if the Grand Title was around? You could had you could have had him running with that for a year, or Cage had him running that with a year before you know you had them eat their first loss. But yeah, I mean I think they're kind of stuck on hey we're gonna only have three titles, and you know hopefully their position modifies. But I mean we just have to wait and see. Yeah, absolutely. Now, uh, after the match, Eli grabs the mic. He runs down Eddie Edwards. He says, Eddie used to be a champion, but now he's gone to hardcore, and it's gotten him nothing. He calls Eddie a loser, and he leaves. Then we get the GWN flashback, and I guess on the Twitch stream, it showed it in its entirety. And, uh, yeah, I don't think that plays plays out too well with the fans. (laughs) It never did, man. (laughs) No, I mean, it's like probably a 20 minute segment at least it feels so long um but uh, speaking of the twitch stream i really got to give props to impact for uh at least us subscribers we had josh matthews you know live streaming during the commercials with even a countdown 
to how long the commercial is going to last. So if you need to leave the room, grab a drink, go to the bathroom, whatever, you knew how much time you had. And I think that was something that a lot of people were complaining about. So I'm glad that Impact did do something about that rather than just throw in partial matches and GWN stuff. Yeah, give them credit. They're trying to improve on it. I mean, there's still some work to be done, but it seems like, you know, just with patience, you, they'll get it right. I mean, to overall, just to even have Twitch as an option, even though I know you know, we'll probably get into it not having the VOD. I mean, that's still a big deal because I guess, you know, the mindset is everyone has the Internet, so you can access it or smartphone, so you'd be able to access it. So, you know, kudos to Impact on that. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, you, you know, when things when they do good things, you definitely have to let it be known that they did a good thing. Uh, so we get an OVE promo. He tells Rich Swan it's time to come home. He hypes up the match between LAX and OVE and the Chris later on. Uh, I, I found this hilarious when Sammy called out Jake for wearing the same outfit as him and just Dave looking around in the background as aggravated as usual. I, I, I always like what they do with these little promos here. You know, it's kind of their own identity, and I just enjoy them. Yeah, you know, these. I think that's the one thing, and I hope they never get away from that, where they have the vignettes back, you know, backstage of them, uh, you know, recording how they record. Uh, that stuff's always going to be awesome. Yeah. You know what? I'm going to let you take on the Rascal segment because I uh, I know you weren't too super thrilled with this. Yeah, man. I mean, it's just one of those things. And, you know, I get it was just a way for them to to get them on TV. I just it did nothing for me. To me, it was kind of and like I said, just for me, it was the worst thing on the show for me. I was like, I really like once it uh, finished, I was like, what the hell was that? Like. <laughs> I think the problem is there's there's not much middle ground here. It's it seems like either people really like it or people didn't like it. You know, it's just I think with the guys and stuff, they're so talented, and and I get it. You know, they weren't. Well, I know Trey had a match later, but I know they. You know, as far as Zach and uh, Desmond, they weren't wrestling. But I don't know. I think people want to see these guys in the ring. Yeah, you can have these segments here or there. But this, for me, it just did absolutely nothing. And I, yeah. I mean, I watched it just to watch. But, I mean, if they're going to have segments like this, it's going to be on the fast forward like I do the GWM flashbacks. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I mean, they, they do look like they're having a good time and having fun. And, you know, I think that's that's a big part about that. And I don't know if this is, you know how they normally are. Maybe this was part of their idea to put the segment in. So if it's something they enjoy, then, you know, I'm, I'm okay with it, but I understand if people aren't. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, So up next we had Allie versus Jordan Grace. That's dark Allie. Um, I mean, Jordan just, just dominated this match. Um, She is a tremendous talent. I'm so, so glad impact was able to sign her. Um, Allie was getting the upper hand, obviously, when Sue Young got herself involved, but then Jordan starts no selling and then Jordan hits her. I don't know if she's got a name for this finisher, but it's like a variation of the Pentagon driver. Um, I've seen her do this before and it's, it it looks so well, so well done. You know, I, I thought, cause I had looked up on the Indies, um, prior to her, excuse me, arrival and impact what her finishing maneuver was and she was using the bear hug and i mean i think it's cool but i was like eh, you know i don't know how that translate on t on tv so i'm glad she kind of it looks like she found an alternative finisher you know i was surprised by the matchup when it initially had a uh, um was advertised because and just kind of it just came across as just random to me because you know we all know with Dark Alley, Sue Young, and the feud it looks like, or at least I thought was with Kara, and then you know Rosemary still being in the picture. So I mean, I already knew I'm like they're not going to have Jordan lose, obviously. Yeah. So um, but no, this is a good showing for Jordan. Obviously, um, she has a lot of promise, and uh, you know, then we obviously we get to see the return. The well, I'm not going to say the return, <laughs> but you know, Rosemary appears obviously in a. You know, I just kind of wonder when she'll be be ready to come back because the first thing I looked at when I seen her, I was looking at her leg, and I still see that big old brace. Yeah. So, um, 
But that's well, cool, you know, they're just, they're prolonging the angle that I got to admit, it seems like it's taken forever, almost a year. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, some some things with a slow burn are good. I think she's advertised for the beginning of February at a Smash Wrestling show. So I would, maybe she's, you know, only a couple, of, two weeks away from being cleared. Um, but yeah, no, after the match, Sue extends her hand to Allie, lights go out. Come back on. Rosemary's in the place of Sue Young. She's extending her hand to Allie, and Allie retreats. So, you know, there's going to be a big payoff. We're going to probably with Rosemary versus Allie. Um, and that, that should be good. I don't know if they're going to hold that. I would assume they're probably going to hold off on that until the uh, April pay per view, which has been confirmed as lockdown, you said, right? Yes, I, I believe so. I was looking at, uh, well, I'm not going to say because we're not supposed to believe dirt sheets, but <laughs> a good source. <laughs> How about that? Yeah, um, it's apparently supposed to be taking place at the Rebel Complex again. So back in Canada, seems like they thrived there. So I've got no problems at all with that. Yeah, you know, and the funny thing, you know, note on Ali, is it me or Ali's gets like the slowest burn to angles in this company? I mean, yeah. you think back, <laughs> you think back when she was doing the apprentice stuff and then, you know, the not knowing how to wrestle. It's like it's a long like burn for Ali. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I, I would definitely agree with that. Um, I think that this is where we peaked at viewership was with the Rosemary return, which then transitioned into Scarlet revealing who her. uh her choice was going to be, and it's end, ended up being herself. I don't know if we talked about this last week or we talked about it offline, but we kind of thought that this is where they were going to go with it. Um, and I, I think it makes the most sense. I wonder if this was actually the whole plan or uh, or not. But um, I don't know if they, they might have missed the window on Scarlet because I feel like had they introduced her as you know this whatever you want to call her um and have her a wrestler as well where she takes the you know the side of sexiness and she can wrestle as well and she's like the most complete knockout something like that and they could have run with that i don't know if uh if people would have gotten behind her more because we did have that initial i, I don't want to say backlash but there were people that were complaining about it well, people complain about everything. Oh, it's that's uh, fair. That's <laughs> fair. <laughs> 20, 2019. I think where well, probably where they figured this was the route to go, and I think the the most apparent one was when she had uh, wrestled on an episode of Explosion a few months back, and I think it was kind of like, and then you see her that she's advertised for shows outside of Impact, so it's like, wait a minute, you know, she's doing this in Impact, but outside of Impact, she's wrestling, challenging for titles, etc. I think where they had missed it was early on when, you know, although people knew she wrestled where they could have paired her. Like I had thought they were going something with the Trevor Lee. Mm. And then, you know, even a little bit, I thought with the Fala and KM, but I think it just kind of just got to a point like, ah, you know, and I, the thing that I love is now that she's going to be competing in the knockouts division. Cause I think her character, it brings a different element. Yeah. She advertises the sexiness, but now we get to see her, see what she does in the ring too. So um, that's always neat. Yeah. And I think that'll just be a draw on its own because she seems to have uh, an interesting move set from uh, a lot of the matches I've seen. So I think that'll draw people in as well. And, you know, I think that she can advertise herself as the most complete knockout where she could bring the sexy and she can wrestle in the ring, you know. Mm -hmm. So interesting to see where they go that. But, you know, and in addition to the knockouts division, which um, I, I think they're going to thrive in that division, we seem like we're going to have some some pretty big feuds in 2019, especially uh, we'll get to it a little later on with Tessa and uh, Gail. But uh, up next, we had Moose versus Brian Cage. Um, this this was really good. Uh, a lot of uh, back and forth. And, you know, Cage and Moose, both big guys. And it, it just it seemed like they worked really well together. And I think this was a good match to uh, portray them both in. Uh, you know, Brian Cage able to show his strength. But Moose also able to look like a true contender now. What did you think of this match? I loved it. And, you know, the one thing with Cage where it just had me had me thinking, I like Cage when he's more 
working as a powerhouse as opposed to you know busting out the high flying stuff don't get me wrong you know there it's cool to see somebody of his size be able to do some of the things he can do you know whether it's the ranas you just splashes and etc but i really think because impact's missing that we haven't really had that since lashley's departure we haven't had that guy that just comes in and can just you know just displays you know a sort of amount of strength like cage can and then moose i mean you know, I think sometimes we look at Moose and we don't see it, but Moose is a big dude as well. Yeah. I mean, he did some stuff, and I really hope, you know, and I know sometimes Impact is it, you know, easily can get away from things like this, but I really hope down the road they really invest some time into a, a feud between these two because these guys, they got great chemistry. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, again, it's Brian Cage not completely on the offensive. It isn't, you know— get all my shit in it's he's actually working on the defensive and things like that like moose was going after i think his knee or his leg for a good portion of the match so you know it's a different look at brian cage as well since when he was in the x division he was generally controlling the majority of all the matches yeah and you know the one thing i pointed out it was just nitpicking i guess on my end i was like i, I guess with brian cage's uh persona it's Oh, you whatever you can do, I can do better because it seemed like every move uh, Moose would do, then Cage would do it like with the pop up power bomb. Yeah. But my favorite spot in the match was uh, when Moose did the uh, go to hell the Cage. Oh, Cage yeah. sold that man like a million bucks, man. And I I really thought I was like Moose probably got him there. So, and then for for Cage to be able to get Moose up for the drill call, which I guess shouldn't surprise anyone since we saw Austin Aries brain buster Moose. Yeah. I thought that looked neat too. That was probably when Moose ended up getting his concussion post slam anniversary. <laughs> but yeah, no, uh, Moose tried to bring a chair into the ring. He swings at a cage, cage ducks, and then puts Moose away with the drill claw, like you said, and looked very good. And uh, a big win for Brian Cage. Uh, you know, I, I thought they could have gone the route of having like a screwy finish here, but we already saw a DQ early on. A no contest match, so it made sense to have an actual finish to this match here. Yeah, I guess I was just surprised with that. I mean, you could, I thought maybe we'd get kind of cross interfering or something, but uh, um, yeah, I mean, good win for Cage. And you know, I didn't realize this, but Cage is really over. I mean, yeah. I, I thought at first I was like, maybe it was just people were just mad because they felt he got screwed, but I mean. You know, I heard a lot of the fans were really on him, so that's good. Maybe he's the number one face now. <laughs> yeah, hey, that that would be fine, you know. I mean, we've seen him kind of turn the corner here when he was elevated into the main event. We've seen this intensity and aggression of him in the last few weeks, and it seems like people have responded well to it. And again, it's one of those things where Impact has to play the hot hand and what's going well for them. Yeah, yeah, and I just think though where they have to just be careful to just have a long drawn out plan. Like I've just always been of the mindset when you know you have like say him, you know, we all know he's gonna eventually be a world champion this year. Mm -hmm. You know, you wanna have not only, you know, a list of people for him to face, but you just kinda wanna just have a long drawn out plan too. And that's why I kinda just think for him and you know, without fantasy booking, I would rather see someone like killer cross win it next then have cage take it off of him than for cage to win it next because i think you can get more out of like say if you have killer cross you know killer cross as champion yeah. and then have cage chasing him instead yeah. of having cage just win it and then because you know he's going to end up facing the same people that he's probably facing right now anyways yeah and i think you know um you could utilize cross having moose in his corner to you know I guess not take away from anybody so that they have the power in numbers. And then that could be, you know, uh, Brian cage having to fend off both of them, making him the, the big champion, something like that. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. And then we get a health update from Taya. She's apparently still at home. I uh, use, you know, air quotes on that recovering. And, uh, she will apparently be cleared for action next week when they go to Mexico. Uh, I believe she has been advertised for the show as returning. Uh, then we get a cross promo, and he says he is no longer the fa uh, Johnny is no longer the fans' champion. They're turning their back on him, and next week everything is on the line. So, 
at least they uh, they're aware of what's going on. Yeah, and you know, credit credit to them. But uh, yeah, I, I, I I'm I really I'm really interested to see how that match is gonna uh, play out. I guess that's the one thing I'm gonna be looking forward to next week. You know, do they decide to do a title change? Yeah, who knows? Um, and it'll be interesting because. Uh, Cross is a, I, I think, a big name in AAA, and Johnny has wrestled down in Mexico a lot too. So um, it'll be interesting to see how the uh, Mexico crowd reacts to them. Yeah, and and I, I, you know, the one thing what I've thought, I just said, you know, these next set of shows is probably going to be tailored uh, for the talent that work in Mexico that are over in Mexico. That way, they can get a you know big reaction and whatnot. Yeah, I think they have advertised. Um, Rich Swan versus Vikingo next week as well. So they're utilizing the Mexican talent already. Uh, then we got a McKenzie interview. She's interviewing Tessa. She's asked if she's ready for a rematch. At this point, Tessa flips out. She says if it wasn't for Gail, she would be champion. She starts taking her frustration out on a bunch of people backstage. Gail intervenes. And the two end up battling it out, ending with Ch- Tessa choking out Gail with a uh, cable. Um, and then it eventually gets broken up, go to commercial, we come back, Scott Demore is yelling at Tessa, saying she can't put her hands on officials. Tessa says if officials didn't put their hands on her, she would still be champion, and they end up telling Tessa to leave, and she is suspended. You know, another heel with good points. <laughs> You're right. I mean, that, I, but, you know, once again, like you said, why didn't we get this following up out of a uh, homecoming? We get it, uh, you know, the week after, you know, the week after. But, I mean, it is what it is. I, I, I just kind of been of the mindset the way they did that match. It was too much Gail Kim involvement. Mm-hmm. You know, she, I mean, she really, she really uh, uh, determined the outcome. So um, I'm glad, too, because at first I thought when we seen this and I seen Gail uh, kind of getting uh, 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 um, s- some licks in. Yeah, I was like, oh, God, they're going to really make <laughs> Gail Kim strong in this. But then then uh, we see uh, Tessa come up, come out on top, you know, choking the hell out of her. Yeah. And I knew the moment that I seen the, the dude come in to try to uh, – pull back Tessa. I knew Tessa was going to hit him. It was just yeah. <laughs> it was yeah. just coming. So, yeah, so I, it looks like this is where we're going to get um like I said, I I kind of just believe I don't see what Tessa benefits from feuding with Gail. I think Tessa's done enough on, on her own where she doesn't need that rub, but I think it's just to get her out of the title picture and get somebody else a shot. I don't know. I mean, I, like I said, I'm fine with it, and I think that having gail go the route she did brings this extra intensity from tessa like we saw here so i think they're making it that much more of a deal yeah i mean i i know i'm just saying i just don't see like tessa beating gail kim i don't know what that really really does you know but i mean you know i'm I'm willing to see it play out but i once again i think she'll you know after she's done with gail she's getting the knockouts title back yeah probably like i said i i I hope they build to a Jordan Tessa match that could take place, maybe Slam Anniversary, something like that. But I would assume, yeah, Tessa will get Tessa and Gale at that April pay per view. Um, could be, even be a match that's uh, up toward the top of the card. I think it'll be interesting to see where they go with the Knockouts Championship because I would assume Tessa will get her rematch at some point soon. Well, and in, not only that, but you think now, like. If Taya and that that's another one I'm interested to see, you know, when she does uh return, you know, what's the fan what what, what how the fans are gonna um you know, are they gonna cheer for her, are they gonna boo her? But she's another one. I'm I really don't know who does she food with yeah, food with <laughs> <laughs> uh feud with for the for the time yeah. being. No, that's, her her rainer. Fair point. It's her. it's gonna be up uh, sorry, keep going. Up. No, I'm sorry. No, all I was going to say is her reign is going to be interesting because, you know, right now, and we see it kind of on social media, she really had something with Killer Cross. Obviously, you know, since she's married to Johnny, she's a part of the whole Johnny Killer Cross angle. But, yeah, I'm really interested to see how this title reign is of hers. I mean, I'm I'm happy to see her get it the way that she got it. I mean, it could have been better, but, hey, she's champion. But I'm really interested to see, A, the crowd reaction, and then, B, just – you know some of the some of the challengers she'll f- be facing. Yeah, because it seems like a lot of 
you know, you have the Gail and Tessa, and then you have basically the rest, most of the other knockouts wrapped up in the undead world or undead realm storyline. So it kind of, yeah, it, it, really a question mark there because it almost seems like they they may go something with Jordan and Sue while Allie and Rosemary have their thing with Kiara. So I don't know. Again, very, very, very interesting to see where, where this whole thing travels because I think Taya was, I, I like I, I thought that they were going to book kind of for the Mexico show, which is why I thought the Lucha brothers were going to get the titles. So they have all their, the big guys that are favorites down in Mexico uh, like Taya, Johnny, and the Lucha Brothers. But, I mean, LAX is is a favorite down there as well, so it seems like they have booked for the Mexico tapings. Yeah, I know, just j- based off of what we've seen advertised, uh, you know, I thought it was interesting. I said, oh, all the people in Mexico, I mean, that are over in Mexico. So I said, okay, one would assume that the, the booking for the Mexico tapings is going to be tailored to you know, these guys, which I guess it makes the most sense and stuff, but mm-hmm. just we have to see what we see. Yeah, pretty much. Um, up next, we have some X Division action. Rich Swan versus Trey. I don't think this was a title match, right? No, but I guess the implications were, you know, Trey, if Trey were to win, he can get a future X Division title shot. Yeah, I always hate that route. I don't know. It's always <laughs> bugged me. It's like, yeah. <laughs> uh, Whatever it, it happens in all all wrestling, so. Uh, but no, this was a, a decent matchup here. Um, this was, I guess, your typical X division or what we expect from the X division, right? Is that fair to say? Yeah, I mean, it was pretty solid. Um, you know, Trey has a lot of promise. Um, obviously, I think this was more the the the, the most important was what happened uh, post match. With, right uh, o- with OVE, but as far as just the match, I mean, you know, typical X Division stuff, and you know, I I, I think uh, you know, obviously Swan gets the win. Um, yeah, I'm I'm kind of with you sometimes, like, <laughs> like it, it, you know, it makes more sense if you want to give somebody or put some type of number one contendership, you have them face somebody other than the champion. Mm-hmm. But then, too, I guess it's like if Trey were to beat Swan, then that puts him in line for a title shot. It's just kind of a weird way of things, but you well, know, you, you have the champion <laughs> take a loss, you know, and then it's. But I guess that's the thing where it's like, oh, if you beat him once, he might be able to beat him again. You don't know. Yeah, and then if you lose, I guess it puts you at the end of the line. <laughs> right, and I mean, Trey lost the Ultimate X match. Basically, him and Swan were the two going for it, and then he loses to Swan here. He's a young, up-and-coming guy. You would think they'd try to build him up a little. You know, I, I don't know. I, I guess, again, it's it's me being nitpicky. I just find it weird out of the bunch. and I mean, I've accepted it now, but I've always kind of seen thought that Desmond Xavier would be the, like when we were getting the Rascals, I thought Desmond Xavier would be kind of like the single star, you know, going for the X Division title. Yeah. And that Zach and Trey would be the tag team. Now, I know obviously Des and Zach, they tag on the the indies, but I don't know. I That was just me. So to kind of see how it uh, turned out, it was just kind of odd for me, but I mean, yeah, I do like what I see from Trey. Yeah, yeah, no, he's he's he'll definitely be a future champion if you know, <laughs> as long as he stays with the company, which I don't see them going anywhere. But um, I believe uh, Dez and Wentz are facing the Desi Hit Squad next week too. Oh, so there you go. So there, there there's their win. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yes, yeah, Swan eventually wins with a uh, four fifty, and that brings out OVE. You know, they surround Rich Swan. Callahan tries to present Swan with a shirt, and then LAX comes out. I kind of like how we're not, they're only giving us a little bit of this um, Swan and Callahan interaction. It always gets interrupted or something like that. So they're not going full in on it. They're just kind of, you know, laying the groundwork for something to happen. Yeah. And I mean, they're building on it. It's some sort of angle, and we don't know which way it's going to go. I mean, there's different, you know, obviously, like I said, the one thing I thought I said, well, we'll probably get a Swan versus Callahan probably for the X Division title, you know, or hell, what if they do something out of the ordinary and have Swan jo- join OVE? You know, you love storylines where there's so many different ways that they can go instead of the predictable route. Yeah, absolutely. Um, here's one thing, and I, I think I brought it up to you yesterday. 
is I think they have a new beginning show next Saturday or it takes place Friday, but they're going to show it on Saturday. So it doesn't air during the impact uh, weekly show, but they're advertising Swan vs. Callahan. And I don't know. I just feel like, you know, it, it just doesn't make sense. You would think they would be building to that match or at least, you could have had this build to that match. It's going to be televised. It, it's just a weird way they go about things with these uh, Twitch shows. Oh, snaps. You know, when I looked at that, I, I don't know, for some reason, I thought it was just kind of be like, you know, when they have like house shows or I didn't know it was going to be televised. So, yeah, I guess I was looking at it. I just said they're going to see how they work and maybe some of the stuff they do in this match. You know, if they ever wrestle one another in impact, they'll kind of like kind of go go off of what they've done but see that's i think that's the thing sometimes with impact when you have these uh twitch shows and you have some of these angles that you're trying to run in impact and even like we were saying with scarlet you know we don't see her wrestle but then they might advertise her elsewhere and she's wrestling on the show so it's like well why isn't she doing that in impact and it just doesn't make it doesn't make any sense so given that we're having some this this angle with ove and rich swan you know why not Hey, you know, because you know they're gonna want to advertise that Twitch Twitch show anyways. Like, why not kind of just say, "Hey, well, they're gonna kind of give it a shot or something." You know, it, it just it's weird. Uh, you know what? I might be wrong. It looks like it's actually a one night only show. Oh, okay. But so I don't know if that's gonna when that's going to air. But regardless, you would think it would be something they would have built toward. You know, that would have been a good way to advertise the show. Yeah, definitely. But we will see. I don't know. I don't know when it's going to air. I could have sworn they said next week, but all right. Maybe maybe some of my information's a little skewed there. But again, most of my thoughts still stand the same. <laughs> and that brings us to a main event: LAX versus the Chris. I mean, you know, we've seen what these four men can do in the ring, and. Uh, they put on another good match here. I really liked that uh, superplex into like the sit out bomb that the Chris do. It, it just comes across so crystal clear. It's just such a beautiful transition into the move. Um, but it's, yeah, they, both these teams work well, really well together. Uh, LAX ends up picking up the victory. Um, I guess they use the same maneuver they used against the Lucha Bros, right? Yes, that, yes, I believe so. Double flapjack or whatever it was. Yeah, it looks like with LAX, what they do, they have um, a bunch of double team moves that they can use. I mean, and we've seen this with plenty of tag teams. Like, I'll just say that comes to mind right now. It's like 3D. I mean, for the most part, 3D would use a 3D to beat people. But I remember at one point, I think they beat somebody with uh, Road Warriors old finisher, or they did the uh, three. Uh, I forgot what they called it, but it was like a reverse three D or, or oh, some. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, some weird, some weird stuff. So I think it's just because I know we had talked about it, like wow, they didn't even do the street sweeper. Yeah. Um, you know, LAX and OVE they got excellent chemistry, and I think anytime you have these teams matched up like you can always uh, bring up the fact of the history they've had where you know OVE and OVE is a credible tag team you know regardless of how they might be used as lackeys of Sammy Callahan at times like like they're a credible tag team former tag team champions you know they had their war with LAX and I thought they did well in here and I mean it's good to see LA uh, LAX I'm sorry OVE used in in the light as such with the Chris brothers so I, I thought this was uh, another great match to, yeah. you know, to cap off a solid show yeah absolutely and uh, it's, I think it's been actually quite some time since we've seen OVE or L the Chris tag together since we saw Jake in the Ultimate X and we had that big break and things like that. It's been a while, I feel like. Yeah, you're right. Um, so then we go backstage, LAX and the Lucha Brothers meet. And then it ends with Ortiz yelling to them, if you guys want another ass beating, let us know. And at that point, Conan says, what are you doing? And he flips out. So uh, I would assume we're probably going to get another one of those matches soon. It's funny because I've never seen champions challenge 
challenge a team, <laughs> beat them, and then challenge them again. again. Like, like I mean, wouldn't it have made more sense if you had Pentagon and Phoenix say, "Hey, you know, you know, we're going to Mexico. Why don't you give us one more shot to give us an opportunity or something like that?" But to see the champions challenge, challenge challengers is a it's a weird one. <laughs> yeah, a little bit. I, I would I would agree with that. But uh, yeah, when when that match happens again, it should be. It should be fantastic, much like the first one. Yeah, uh, that's going to be another thing that I'm looking looking forward to. Um, outside of the uh, the cross in uh, M- M- Johnny Impact World Title match. Yeah, yeah. So next week's show should be good as well. Um, it'll be interesting to see how the Mexico crowd is this time. From, from the pictures I saw, it looked like they had a a really good crowd there. It seemed like they had a. Uh, completely blocked off the hard camera side so they had everybody opposite of the hard camera so that should uh translate well to tv at least yeah, so that's always good <laughs> yeah all right so anything else you want to add um did you want to touch on the was it the the v the vod did you oh, want to touch on that we talked a little bit about it earlier on oh, oh yeah that okay. was before it crashed i mean uh, after it crashed <laughs> the Skype call. Oh yeah, that, that's right. That's right. Yeah. Uh, no, um, you know, once again, oh uh, here, I, there was one point I wanted to make. You know, once again, we've gotten two great episodes of Impact back to back, and I think this is the route to go because if you look at the wrestling landscape, mm-hmm. you know, at this moment, there's a lot of drama going on, and I know Impact has their own with the whole people not being able to watch or whatever but you see the other stuff's going on while impacts kind of flying under the radar giving us quality shows so i just hope that's something that they can continue and just lastly i think because we're gonna probably see as you know time passes we're gonna see you know talent just you know switching going from here to there and etc I just hope, like, I don't really think Impact needs to sign anybody at this time. But if they do, they need to go more for the unknowns and try to groom them into stars. I don't think throwing money at um, at at super well-established names is going to help them, you know, as far as, you know, whether it's ratings or whatever. So, you know, go for the unknowns, the under-the-radar talent, and, uh, uh, um, you know, go with them as opposed to the expensive ones and i I wanted to ask you and then i'm I'm done Mm -hmm. Uh, (laughs) no i i didn't know if you wanted to what what were your thoughts on the jericho thing um i don't know man like like i said i just feel like he couldn't even do just a one-off at least just show face you know give a little pop i don't think any of us were really expecting him to sign long term but we just wanted to see him for a little bit and i feel like the fact that he didn't even show up once kind of speaks volume you know just talking about the relationship he has with you know ed and scott and don and all of them you would have thought he would have just done a little favor like that yeah you know when he uh when it came out what he said he, he had said i mean the way that i took it and not to be a debbie downer like the one thing we got to give uh, Jericho credit he's never going to put down impact you no, know he's going to no, say that the product the product's good and you know people should watch but I think though sometimes you can read between the lines like you know he had mentioned that they all had offered him a lot of money but but AEW offered him more mm. I I think personally if impact were even I would well I don't know about so much but a pop but I think if impact were on a channel that everybody can see, I think it would have been more likely that we got some kind of appearance. I just think, you know, the guy of his caliber, and I'm not saying he has an ego, but, you know, some of these wrestlers, they obviously do. I mean, you know, the thought of him on being on some channel that not anyone can see and, you know, be able to be the butt of jokes like, ah, you appeared and no one can even catch you or whatever Mm -hmm. like that, you know, that plays a role. And then, you know, I think what makes AEW so attractive to some is it's a brand new company. So I think jumping on board, you're going to be part of the history. Is no different than when TNA started. I mean, right. if you look at TNA when it first first started, they had pretty much a whole a lot of uh, old WCW guys there. You know, by uh, exception to Hogan, obviously. Like 
you know, a brand new company is going to attract, it's going to attract that. So yeah, it's appealing to them. I mean, hell, they probably might put the title on them and everything, <laughs> but yeah, I'm with you. I just think it's sad and it did, did kind of speak volumes where it's like, even if at Bound for Glory, you would have just had him come out and cut a promo against Eli Drake, that would have been enough. And that right. would have helped impact in a long way. But to not get that, it just leads me to believe that, you know, they're cool. And, you know, he's going to say good things about impact. But I think he thinks he's too big and a big of a star to actually appear. And if he feels that way, and I'm not trying to put words in his mouth, but if he were to feel that way, that's fine. You know, he's accomplished a lot. But I just kind of just see, you know, I was seeing some fans like, well, you see, he's saying they have money. It's like he's not not gonna bad mouth the company. right he's right yeah with Don, he's friends with don so of, of course he's gonna put it put it off but if they if they had all this money i mean you can dive into it if they had all this money then you know they wouldn't be on pursuit i guess yeah. that's the one thing you would i say. think i think it was just a, a bad timing for everything like yeah. you said had they had been showcased on a bigger platform or something like that then i i think he probably might have signed yeah but, but Hey, you know what? Like I said, the route we don't we don't need a Jericho, though. You know, yeah, they exactly. they need to go and, like you said, build young talent. Be this, like you know, where while TNA had all those veterans, they were also building up all these young guys at the same time. And that's the route that they need to continue because I think what they can have over, excuse me, have over these other companies is be a youthful company. I mean, you know, they got, I mean, the old guys that they do have, I mean, 35, that's not old, yeah. but I I think they can be a youthful company. And like I said, they have their core base. So, you know, a lot of us, you know, we're following some of these wrestlers, you know, we want to see them reach, you know, the, the highest of heights in their career and whatnot. So I think that's just a route to go. So I think, you know, sometimes we look at a Jericho, yeah, it'd be awesome. You think about all the dream matchups he could have and stuff, but in a sense that kind of stops the youth movement. So right. I think that's the way to go. Yeah, because then they would have just booked completely around him and it probably would have shown. Yeah. But yeah, I think that is all for today. We are almost at the hour mark. So uh thank you everybody for come for coming and checking out the our podcast, Ro, thank you once again for joining me. And until next time, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye. Did you like that video? If so, click here to check out more great content. Thank you for supporting the Clock Cleaners podcast.